Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to go over this interview that Dr. Jordan P. Peterson had with African entrepreneur called Machetta Wade. Let's go over this interview. I found it a bit interesting, but let's get straight to the point and I will comment whenever I think that there's a reason to comment. Well, you, you list here in one of your articles uh, where you make re reference to these rating systems, the bottom 10 countries for doing business in the world, Chad, Haiti, Central African Republic, Congo, Democratic Republic, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Venezuela. There's a lovely example, Eritrea and Somalia. Um, doctor, I think it's Somalia. And so there are three exceptions in yeah. the African ecosystem. Yeah. Mauritius, Rwanda, Kenya, South Africa, Botswana and Zambia. You pointed out in your pros prospectus, is it prospectus yeah, article? Yeah, prospectus article of uh, Art right, right. Institute. Right, that Mar Mauritius is a rising star, uh, and Rwanda is in some ways comparable to Georgia. So some of these countries have started to get this right. Yes. And so what's the consequence of that? And what does right mean? What they have understood, what these countries have understood is that economic freedom is at the center for prosperity building. Uh, Rwanda, for example, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, is explicit about it. He said he wants to be the Lee Kuan Wu of, he wants to be the Singapore of Africa, and Lee Kuan Wu is his model. Now, the dirty mouths are gonna start shouting, oh yeah, see, authoritarian, blah, 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 whatever. Me, I wanna talk only about the, um, econ on the economic side. If you take Lee Kuan Wu and Singapore as your example, then it means that like him, you're gonna have to be serious about economic freedom. And that's exactly what he did. That's what Singapore did. When Singapore figured that out, they went on to put in the right reforms to make their environment the most, some of the most business-friendly environments in the world, one of the most free markets environment in the world, and you saw the magic of Singapore. Today, Singapore is richer than its ex-colonizer, Great Britain. Yes, this is true. It's not only Paul Kagame, many other African presidents, the new president in Malawi, the president of Ghana, they're all currently speaking about the economic freedom. And I think the African leaders have finally realized that the one thing that matters and what we should strive for is economic freedom. Now, the way to go about it is not straightforward. The Asian models, for example, what China did, first closing of their own markets, building their internal markets, and then slowly opening them back up. That is a model, and those models are interesting models, and I think African countries can learn more from the Asian countries, because the Asian countries like China, Singapore, and Malaysia, and many others, they went through very similar histories, in a sense, that they were also colonized, and many of them have now been able to move past it. So I agree, and it's good that you know, Rwanda has a clear model. It's good that African leaders are now looking to Asian countries to improve our economic situations. And I agree that the economic freedom is the most important thing currently for the African nations. Those are the only metrics. EU, UN, all these people, when they come to Africa, they always talk about, you know, climate change, this, that's all of these things that we can't really do anything about because they are the ones who are consuming and destroying the world. The only thing we can do is improve our economic and material conditions, whatever the way that would be. So this, what she's talking about, you know, putting the economic prosperity in front is 100% correct way to do it. So when I hear people telling me today, oh, Africa is poor because of colonization, I'm like, please, let's move on from that. Does it have maybe a tiny percentage in where we are today? Maybe, maybe, and I don't know. But I know it's not the cause, because if it were many countless countries have been colonized before, and by the way, colonizing one another is, is humanity's history. It just happened that maybe African, Africa has been one of the, the, the last you know, um, colonized region in the world. So in our psyche, it, it is there, and it acts like nothing happened before to others. But uh, flash news, it's the history of the world. We've been capturing each other back and forth, all of that. So anyway, I understand the sentiment. What she's trying to say is that, you know, people have been colonized and we should move forward from it. I agree to a certain extent, because at the end of the day, when I made my channel, I wanted to make it more about what we can do, how policies that our governments do 
affects us. So at the end of the day, I agree with what she's saying. And I do believe that, you know, always saying that, you know, colonialism this and colonialism that does not solve issues, nor is it applicable. However, to say that colonialism had only a little effect on us, that is nonsense. And also, the thing is that it's not about what happened in Africa. Like, that's not the issue. The issue is not that, you know, France came one day and then, you know, they were colonizing certain African countries and then it ended 60 years ago or something. If it was like that, there would be no issue. But the problem is that France is currently fighting wars in multiple African countries. They are still actively robbing African countries. After freedom was given to certain countries, France has killed dozens of African leaders. Every time you get a good leader, France comes in and they assassinate that leader. To say that that has no effect on that country is a bit childish. Now, I agree that in the end of the day, you know, the African saying goes, if there are no enemies within, the enemy outside cannot do us no harm. If we didn't have terrible leaders that France can give money to so that they can continue robbing us, then France wouldn't be an issue. So I understand that at the end of the day, who we have to put the blame on is our own leaders. Those leaders that are enemies to us by supporting our enemies, they are the number ones that has to go. In the Haitian Revolution before the war began, they first dealt with the collaborators, the people who were working with the French. So in the end of the day, like we have to deal with the enemies that we have within. I agree with 100%. And we have to see what EU, what France, what Americans are doing with their war on terror, how their companies are ripping us off, how we do not benefit from the natural resources that we sell to EU, and we should cut that off completely. Those are the steps that we have to take. We have to finally realize that our enemies have been our enemies for a long time, and they will continue to be our enemies. And it's us that are giving them the opportunity of stealing from us. But the truth is, um, Singapore, richer than Great Britain today. And then Hong Kong happened. And then because Hong Kong happened, China even today happened. Because China's like, wait a minute, what, con what went on over there? And then China went on to do the exact same thing with its SEZs, the special economic zones, some of the most free market zones in the world. And then look at it happen in communist China, who, when it comes to economics, decided that we're going to do the free market, we're going to be capitalists, because that's the only way we tried everything else. We killed hundreds of millions of people, and, and, we, have, and we have nothing to show for it. But now that we're tired of being disrespected members of society, because guess what, that's the other thing too. I think that's oversimplification. Yes, capitalism, in a sense, has helped China and they've adopted capitalism to a certain extent. But I wouldn't consider China to be a capitalist because at the end of the day, their markets are highly regulated. Their markets are closed off. Go to China and try to establish some sort of like competition to their national markets. It's very difficult. And now, actually, they've opened it up a bit. But, but it wasn't like they just opened their markets and they were like, you know, come here, do free market, do whatever you want. And in the beginning, especially, they completely closed off their markets to build their own internal markets. And this is something that I think Ghana is now doing when it comes to chocolate production. They put some regulations so that people cannot buy chocolate outside so that they will build the internal markets. Stuff like that is what Africa should do. We should close off our markets because EU, when it comes to agriculture, they are dumping them into our markets and it's adversely affecting the internal production. So the idea that, you know, the solution is just free markets and that's what the Asian countries did. No, the Asian countries were smart. They adopted certain capitalistic things, but they still protected their own market. They first built internal markets, and then they started to compete outside. Now, of course, they did allow companies to establish factories in their countries, and they made it sure that, you know, they, those companies would get cheap labor, government would support them. Those things are things that we should copy from the capitalistic sense. Free market has been killing African countries for a long time. Our market is too free. You can ship anything to Africa from anywhere, and that's the issue we have. First, we need to close off our markets. We need to build the internal markets before we 
open our markets freely. And this is how IMF has been duping and killing African economies for a long time. Capitalism and free markets has not been the solution. The Chinese model, I think, is much better than what we have right now. And sure, we should copy things from them. But it's not free market that we should copy. You want to be respected in this world? You're going to have to be among the, mo the prosperous ones for other reasons. Would it be nice, G, that we respect people just because? Absolutely. But that's really not the world we live in. So when China got tired of being disrespected, they're like, maybe we've got to build also some prosperity here because then they're going to hear us. And today, China, being one of the, you know, being where it is at, even Hollywood, Hollywood, who tries to tell the world how to think, is being told by China what movies to make and how to tweak stories and history in order to be palatable for them. You see the power that comes with, with being prosperous. I completely agree. Sometimes I hear African leaders, especially like the Somali president, he's always going around all these, you know, UN meetings, international meetings. He's like, oh, you know, taking care of the poor countries, supporting us, helping us. Blah, blah. Nobody cares, bruv. At the end of the day, you have the best location on the earth. You have all these assets. Come on, like do something and then people are going to listen to you. Stop crying, fall. Stop crying and stop talking about nonsense. So I agree. Money, money, money. That's all that matters in the end of the day. EU, UN, US, all this international law, all this talk about climate change. At the end of the day, only thing they want is to stay on top and to have the money. And we should do the same. I completely agree. What do you recommend concretely to countries like Senegal to get the hell out of the way, let's say, of the people who would, like you, would try to, would do everything they could to try to make it better? I mean, one of the things that happened with India is India established the Indian Institute of Technology, which is a deadly yeah. engineering school, and <laughs> a huge number of its graduates went to Silicon Valley, as you well know. Yeah. And many of the successful Indian graduates of IAT started to dump money back into India and build a, a capitalist infrastructure there, or help build a capitalist infrastructure there. So this sort of thing can really take hold. If you were making recommendations to governments who wanted to get on board and stop being like Chad, Haiti, <laughs> Central African Republic, Congo, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Venezuela, et cetera, what, what concrete step, steps should they take Right. from the bottom up to get the hell out of the way. I actually made video, I think, earlier this year about the mistakes that Somali diaspora are making, because that's true. Diaspora is a huge asset. The Indian diaspora has been able to transform India, but African diaspora has not been as successful. I mean, sure, they've done good things, but there are certain aspects that the diaspora should improve. And if you want to know more about it, Please do check that video. Exactly. So two things we've been doing, uh, because I'm, an, I'm a practitioner, as that's my entrepreneurial journey. I'm an entrepreneur, so I practice what I preach. Uh, but I also preach. I preach for free markets. And so when it comes to that, I'm, I'm, one of the hats that I wear is as the um, director for the African Center for Prosperity of the Atlas Network, the largest organization in the world of um, free market think tanks around the world. And so what we do there is we work on um, reforms around the world to take down barriers of entry for local entrepreneurs. So that's one thing. But as we mm -hmm. all know, that's a great initiative to take. And we've been making some really um, good advances in, uh, in, in uh, many countries, especially in Ghana. We've been making a lot of progress with our partners there, Imani. But, um, piecemeal, but that is piecemeal legislation. It takes forever. It is hard as heck. And by the time you made a gain here, you made 20 losses over there, and it's an continuous problem. But until we get better, we got to continue at it. So that's one thing we've been doing. And so that's a, a hat I wear working with free market think tanks to try to make it easier for en local entrepreneurs to, 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 to join in the party. That made no sense to me. I mean, how is opening markets to everyone in the world, especially like all these Chinese companies that can produce things very cheaply and we cannot compete currently, how is that supposed to help our local entrepreneurs. It doesn't. First, in this state that we are in, opening our markets is not the solution. We need to close off our markets. We need to create jobs, build factories, 
And this is what African countries are currently doing. This is what Ethiopia, Khan, and many other African countries are doing because they've realized that just opening your markets and wishing that foreign companies will come in and, and create jobs, that doesn't work. What you use, you should be able to produce as well. And what we need to do is build local production. That is the number one. We need factories. We do not need end products from other parts of the world. We also have to cut our dependency when it comes to selling of natural resources to EU and other regions. And we need to increase the prices of natural resources by limiting the sale of natural resources. Natural resources should be extracted by local companies. So there are a lot of things that we can do. And I do agree to a sense that we have to also make a better economic environment for companies, for businesses, make our markets more business friendly in a sense. But that doesn't mean that we should copy free market economies. Because look at EU, look at America, like they are very close off. It's not as if that they are free markets. Like they are very close off, they are very re regulated. So we should copy those things as well. But this idea that just, just accept free markets and everything will be okay, we've tried it. We've had the IMF sponsored free market for over 30, 40 years now. It hasn't worked. It will never work for us. So this, what she's selling here is a bit simplified. To a certain extent, I agree with a lot of the things she's saying, but I think it's just a bit too simple. Now, if you like this video, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.